Oh, you said. <laughs> this is this is off the sheet. This is not a sheet. <laughs> this is sort of attached to this, but. Okay, now, uh, for, I mean, I would write it a similar way. You can use whatever variables you want. If you, uh, what's what's affecting the height of this thing as it travels into the air here? Gravity is affecting it, but what, what affects how high it goes? The initial vertical velocity here. I'm, I'm not concerned with its travel sideways. I'm just thinking about its height. So it's, it's vertical velocity, the initial velocity you give it. What else? Gravity, you already said, acceleration due to gravity. And the third thing would be is the height you start at. Well, time, yeah, as time goes by, it affects it. But the things that are contributing, like we're writing, we're writing h as a function of t here. The height of the object that is a function of time, the initial velocity matters, the, the effect that gravity has. And if you started uh, higher or lower, right? If you if you launched it off the top of a building, that'd be different than if you launched it from ground level. In physics, you don't ever put a third constant term on here because you always seem to say that wherever the thing is starting is what height? Zero, zero right? But if you wanted to say this is zero and we're launching it from a t the top of a building, which is a height of 100, there would be a, a reason you could say this is 100 and this is zero. In that case, my equation would have a plus 100. If you wanted to, you could call it, I don't know, initial height or something like that. High. All of these things. So if you if you have something that is, um, now I would tend to put this first. I don't know why you guys put that first. It does. I guess it doesn't matter. Actually, maybe there's some sense for putting the initial height first. But whatever. In, in math, it, the tendency is to put the highest degree term first. So this is usually, say, negative 4.9 if we're doing it in metric t squared. Plus, if we launched it at 10 meters per second upwards, 10 t. Let's say we launched it from a height of 50 meters. Okay, this, I have to change my diagram. I just wanted something different than that. But if you're launching it from the height of that with a vertical velocity of 10, this would be the equation. You have some other related uh, equations from physics that relate to this, right? What would the velocity, how do you find, if this is the position, which I'm using h for position, how do you get the velocity? What function do you get? How do you get a function for velocity from this? No, don't, well, let's get to the physics things in a second. What, what, uh, from calculus, if you have something from the position, if you have a function for the position, how do you get a function for the velocity? This is the derivative, right? This is h prime of t. Or in other words, it's what's this going to be here? <coughs> Negative 9.8 because you took this, you, you decreased this by 1 and multiplied it in front, right? Negative 9.8t plus 10. If we wanted to find the acceleration in this situation, you already know what the acceleration is. The initial velocity isn't causing any acceleration. The initial height doesn't cause any acceleration. What's the only thing that's... Gravity is the only thing here. The acceleration should be negative 9.8, right? Being accelerated downward. If you want a function for the acceleration, you can either say it's the second derivative of time or it's the first derivative of velocity. But in either case, what is it here? If this is the velocity, <clears throat> yeah, because the derivative of this, derivative of that component is zero, right? That doesn't cause any change. The acceleration is constant. You know that, right? In this situation, the acceleration is constant if we're ignoring wind resistance and all those sorts of things. If you did this same procedure with the equation you gave me up here, this thing, what do we get here? So let's, uh, I don't know if I have enough space here, but h equals vit. And even if you want to ignore the initial height at the end, it doesn't actually matter because if we put 
some initial kind of height here. What's the what's the formula you have for velocity here? V i plus a t. How, how what is this in relation to this? Do if you if you wanted to find the derivative of this, okay, let's pretend we didn't know that. What's the derivative of this? It's a it's a constant times time, right? The derivative of three x is three. The derivative of 3t with respect to t is 3. So the derivative of vi times t is vi. The derivative of this with respect to time, right, times the variable, it's just you take the 2 and put in front, like your power rule, you put the 2 in front, 2 times a half, cancels out, it's just at. This, these are related as this is the derivative of this. It's not some magical different formula, okay? Because that <clears throat> initial height then is nothing there. And if you wanted the acceleration, it's the derivative of this. If this is a constant, it's zero, right? This is zero. And this is just a. Like if it's g in this case or whatever value it happens to be, a equals a. That's a, that's a revolutionary statement. Th these are related by calculus, right? I mean, that's what those are. Now, in... In some of the things I've given you here, <clears throat> I've given you a function that's got a third degree term here. So this is not a projectile being launched in the air. This is something that's just moving according to this function. But you can still apply all the concepts here. The concepts for, for this whole thing, the concepts are just what we kind of looked at last time. If you're using the variable s for position, s of t, that function, S prime is the velocity and S double prime is acceleration. If you want, the third derivative is jerk, which is changes in acceleration. Everything that I've given you here, I want us to I want you guys to work through. You you might have to think about it and think about what the questions are being asked. When's this moving to the right? When's it moving to the left? When is it stationary? How could you uh, make a diagram of this? Total distance, displacement average velocity, all these kinds of things. There's some other questions here for you. This one's actually a projectile. Why is this not uh, 4.9 here, this negative 16? Because what? You're either somewhere else or it's in feet. Yeah. G in uh, metric is 9.8 meters per second squared. G in uh, feet is per second squared is 32 feet per second squared, approximately, right? So this is a half of that value. This is in feet. You should be able to tell me now what each of these represent. This represents the half the acceleration, right? Because if you were to do the, der the second derivative there, you'd get negative 16. What does this represent here? The, yeah, absolutely, the initial velocity. What does this represent? Where the height that it started at, right? But you should be able to use calculus to, to figure these out, okay? What's the initial velocity? We can see what it is. <clears throat> if you didn't recognize that, or if I gave you a function like this where that doesn't apply, right? If I give you a cubic like this, don't say, oh, here's the initial velocity, negative 6, right? That's not it. it that only works if it's a, if it's a projectile, right? What? If you factor one of the t's, it's still part of the function, though. It might help you find some zeros if that's what you need. Okay, there's some other questions here. You have to think carefully about this. <clears throat> I have probably given you more questions than you need. We're going to work on that right now.